The main reason that we started the, the academy is because administrators had been talking about equity in ways that were, were really not useful to them. It was an assumption that if, as long as you talk about culturally responsive instruction or pedagogy or culturally sustaining pedagogies that all of a sudden those leaders would know how to lead differently. The work in the Culturally Responsive School Leadership Academy really gives leaders an opportunity to deeply think about their own leadership and why issues of achievement gaps, of discipline disparities are taking place. So for us, we are trying to um, help our staff unlearn some of their own thinking around student discipline. We use this framing around what is your own epistemology that you bring to this understanding around student discipline, and that oftentimes it's a very traditional consequence-based approach, which we know is perpetuating the school-to-prison pipeline. School improvement is people improvement. We need to look at ourselves, our own epistemology, how we come to this world, to our schools, and, and really start this work internally before we move and look outside at others. So that critical self-reflection is a, is a significant component of the Academy and the work we've done. So the Academy uh, is designed in um, four units, I guess we would call them, um, eight days. Each of the units last two days. The first two days is about um, the history of oppression in schools. It really is a deep dive as to um, why we have these achievement gaps today, um, what's caused them, what's reproducing them, um, and, and how we can think differently about that. The second two days is about leadership for critical self-reflection. We're really trying to then analyze, okay, now if we have an understanding of the problem, we have to analyze what are our roles in contributing um, to that. Problem. The last two sections are really designed around um, the environment of the school and we're really purposeful about the, the idea that that environment needs to be informed by the community in which the school serves. Where I saw the gap was, was that these kind of conversations did not go far enough into how we can uh, enhance the epistemologies and the knowledge and the ancestral knowledges of minoritized students. Like how can we understand epistemologies that are deep in communities around schools and bring them out into curriculums, into policy making within schools and districts. And, and I, I just didn't feel like um, all of the, the, the current literature out there didn't do that. Using that framework and, and what we've learned in terms of those four uh, key components of leading for equity and bringing that back and making sure that uh, it moves from learning work uh, into implementation and uh, effectively become standard work in the Mounds View Public Schools. As I walk away from those experiences in those two days, um, I can no longer see my school, um, our district, um, in the same way. It is, it is completely altered. It's almost as if I put new glasses on and, and what I'm seeing um, is uh, monumentally different than what I saw the two days prior. We all have this epistemology that has shaped who we are. Maybe we've been missing out on understanding you know, our, some of our students' epistemologies. Maybe we have not understood that uh, you know, some of our teachers' epistemologies may be in conflict with some of the work that we're trying to do, that we're trying to accomplish. And so that's, that's helped us in our school, and that's where I've seen an impact with our students because we're having a better understanding of, of where people come from and what they bring to the table and seeing students not as a deficit, but just as an asset to everything that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, because like I said, it's all about what we do for our kids and, and for our students.